Hi, this is Stacy with Stalking Horse. Welcome to our channel. Gonna talk to you guys today about the new E&M 2021 office visit guidelines. So we're actually gonna do a three-part series. We're gonna cut it up. We're gonna have one video about the number and complexity of problems addressed, a second video or part two that's gonna be about data, and then a third video or part three that's gonna be about risk. And so we're gonna give some tips and pointers on documentation and coding for each of those three areas. And also don't forget that the AMA put out some technical corrections. Um, so make sure you check those out online. If you don't know where to go, go ahead and click the links on this page. One will take you to the AMA's page where it will give you the new updated guidelines with those technical corrections. And then another link will be there to take you to that AMA table, that grid, that chart that you really need to become familiar with to be successful with documenting and coding uh, with these new rules for office visits. All right, see you soon. Hi, Stacy with Stalking Horse here. So this is a little bit of a bonus for you guys. We decided to add on a little, um, a little video about the technical corrections that came out from the AMA on March 9th. So we just kind of talked about that three-part series. We talked about number and complexity of problems addressed, the data element, and also risk. And um, you can check out those videos uh, separately. But we wanted to make sure we touched on a couple of things that may not have made it into those videos. So um, with those technical corrections, I basically want to break it down into those three parts. So number and complexity of problems addressed, amount and or complexity of data to be reviewed and analyzed, and the risk of complications, morbidity and or mortality of patient management. So let's start off as always with number and complexity of problems addressed. So there were a couple of things that were updated in the technical corrections in relation to that number and complexity of problems. So one of the things is kind of talking about the presenting problem essentially, kind of like the nature of that presenting problem or what we used to think of um, before. So if a patient presents with a problem that could be a highly morbid condition, however, it turns out that it's not after testing, um, that problem, the complexity of that problem should not be lowered just due to the fact that they didn't actually have it in the end. So the final diagnosis is not always what will uh, determine that number and complexity of problems to be addressed. So uh, a great example would be if you have a patient come in with um, suspected COVID and they have comorbid conditions that put them at a higher risk, um, this could then appear and this patient could come in as a more complex patient, but perhaps after testing, they are negative for COVID. Um, but again, that presenting with that highly complex problem should be considered and that can be used when you select the number and complexity of problems addressed. So that's pretty important to, to think about and consider and also make sure our documentation states that. Um, the next area is, is risk. So let's talk about what things in risk um, and the technical corrections may have had a higher impact. So uh, one of the big things that they talk about is um, that the term uh, risk being separate from the risk of patient management when referring to number and complexity of problems. And so it actually shows its head two times in those technical corrections. And um, I think I know why. Uh, I, this has been really challenging um, as an auditor um, and a coder and an educator to both wrap my head around and also convey that there's a difference between the risk of a problem, which is basically the complexity of that problem, and then the risk that's posed by managing that patient. So the risk of complications, morbidity or mortality from the patient management, which is a separate element, is different from the risk of the condition itself. And um, 
The reason why I feel like that's really confusing is because if you think about last year and prior and the ta old table of risk, that presenting problem uh, used to be in our table of risk. So you used to be able to consider the risk of that problem when factoring the risk of patient management. But we can't do that anymore. So they wanna make sure that we understand that those are two completely separate things. Risk, uh, meaning complexity of the problem, is one thing. And then risk for complications, morbidity and mortality of patient management is another. Now, sometimes those two things fall completely in line with one another, and that's fine. Um, but sometimes they don't. So a patient may come in where they have a highly morbid condition, perhaps a cancer. But the treatment that's being um, recommended or the, the management poses maybe just a moderate risk and not high. So there's obviously different scenarios that will fit, you know, different ways, but it's really about the individual patient and what's happening and knowing that those are two separate elements and that we're not going to blend them together, you know, like we kind of did in the past. We're, we're not doing that anymore. So they were making that distinction within the, um, with, within the guidelines. And so essentially that kind of is also under number and complexity of problems addressed. But let's also, since we're talking about risk, kind of go into that, that uh, surgeries topic. They uh, added to the technical corrections some information about surgeries and the difference between a minor surgery, major surgery, like what they mean. And it has nothing to do with global periods. It literally has to do with the risk to the patient about the procedures um, I encourage you to read through that information um, on the official guidelines, those technical corrections, because I personally also found it helpful just to kind of see from their perspective what, uh, what they wanted to make more clear to us. Um, so that's an important piece. So let's talk about data. There were some um, updates to data in those technical corrections that I felt were very helpful. Uh, one of them is that they mentioned uh, being able to take testing that was considered but not actually carried out into consideration for data, that we are able to do that. So perhaps a patient comes in and they're requesting a, a specific test or a patient presents and you consider a particular test, but after discussion with the patient, it's uh, decided that they not undergo that specific testing. That testing is allowed to be used in factoring of data, which is really important because that that is does show that level of complexity is there. Um, whether or not you ended up ordering it is one thing, but the complexity in decision making had to be there. Uh, for the provider to make that determination, that decision, and they had to have that conversation with the patient as well. One of the updates that I actually personally found a little bit funny was that they commented on pulse ox or pulse oximetry that it is not an element to be considered in data. And I just find that a little bit funny because there were so many questions that got posted about pulse ox when they released the guidelines that I just was shocked at how many people were asking about the same thing. So I literally think they were just like, oh my God, <laughs> we're just gonna add this into the technical correction so that everybody knows that no, we're not counting pulse ox in the uh, MDM. So anyhow, uh, that's the highlights of the updates, at least from my view. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you have any requests for future videos, Enter that in the comments, and remember, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth.